Good day everyone and welcome back to Easy and Different Radiology. I am Dr. Osama Ibrahim and today our appointment number 11 from Tips and Hands. Today I want to talk about the long bones fracture and, and I will talk about this issue from the view of how to describe the lesion of or the fracture in the long bones. So let's start our presentation. My presentation today is uh, based on the uh, simply and accurately features which you should describe it uh, during uh, diagnosing fractures uh, in the X-ray, particularly in the long bones. There are two eight items. These eight items should be discriminating or described during your report for the fractures. The first issue is the site. Second item closed or open. Third, fragments. Number four, direction of the fracture. Number five, articular surface involvement or not. Number six, position of the two major fragments. Number seven, angulation and at the end, rotational deformity. This is the main eight items should be described when you face the fractures in the X-ray examination. Let us talk about these eight items in details. The first one is the site, and you should specify three items when you detect the site. Specify which bone is involvement, radial bone, femur, humerus, and so on. Then specify which part of the bone, and divide the bone into th th three parts, the proximal, the middle, or the distal third is involvement, or the junction between the proximal and the middle, the junction between middle and third, you can describe the lesions like this. And at the end, or the, la the third items you should be specified is the side, you should be specified if it is left or right side. And this is an example of a fracture of the femur. So if you wanted to describe this femur fractures according to the side, this side of the femur is the proximal third, so this is fracture at the proximal one third of the right femur because R here referred to the right side. So we specifying the site from the right, specifying the bone as a femur, and specifying the part of the bone is fractured. This is the proximal part from the bone. And this is fractured if you wanted to describe or specify the site. This is fracture of the middle one third of the left femur. This is the third example of the tibia, and is a tibial fracture here at the distal end. So this is fracture distal one third of the left tibia, like this. The second item is closed or open the fractures, and the closed or open is according to the skin involvement or the skin uh, pierced, like these fractures which is uh, punctured the skin. So it is called open fracture, or these fractures which is the skin is intact in the, that diagrams referred to the closed fracture. So you should mention if the fracture is closed or opened and this is a skin which appear to broken here at that region. So this fracture is open fracture of the tibia. This is the tibia and there are open the fracture here. And so you can describe it as open or closed according to the skin involvement. Open fracture has punctured the skin. Third item is the fragments, and this is very important items. If you look at that uh, humerus, left humerus, you can discriminate three parts of the bone. So if the, uh, there are more than two parts of the bone fragments, more than two fragments, it described as comminuted fracture. Uh, and if the bone is uh, 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 impacted in the other bone like this radius, so at that time is it described as impacted fracture. So the fragments is describing the bony fragments, and according if there are more than two bony fragments, comminuted fracture. If one fragment is driven into the other, like this radius, it is described as impacted fracture. The number four is the direction of the fracture. 
the direction of fractures which is describing the direction of fracture like this fracture which is perpendicular to the long axis of the bone for example this bone is the right tibia so it is described as transverse fracture if the fracture is oblique even in these phalanges which can be considered also as a long bone so it is described as an oblique fracture uh, and the spiral fractures is the fractures which is uh, spirals in uh, 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 in the posterior and the anterior aspect of the bone so it is described as spiral fractures most commonly occurs in the toddlers uh, uh, at the tibia for example for this current example so the direction of fractures can be described as transverse oblique or spiral Number five, articular surface involvement, and this is very important to mention it in the report. If it is occurred like this tibia, which is showing articular surface involvement, fracture line extending from the articular surface to the medial cortex, and this is very important because it affecting the joint, and also this associated with the depressed lateral condyle. Uh, anywhere the intra-articular extensions like this also. Uh, medial malleolus fracture with intraarticular extension to the ankle joint should be mentioned in the report. Intraarticular extension should be mentioned always. Number six, position of the two major fragments, like these diagrams which is showing the fractures of the greater tuberosity of the humerus and not displaced in the in its place. Uh, so it is described as undisplaced fractures compared with these fractures which is displaced from its sides so as at times it is called displaced fracture and this is what I mean by the position of the two major fragments let us see it in the example of long bones this femur which is showing the fractures at the proximal one third or in the junction between the proximal and the middle one third and this uh, distal segment from the femurs is displaced medially if you look at the lateral view and this is the patella so this is the anterior aspect and this is a posterior aspect the distal segment is displaced posteriorly so if you want to describe the position of the two major fragments here this is displaced fracture and the displacement is medial and posterior medial and posterior displacement of the uh, distal part of the fractured uh, femurs displacement is always describes the relations to the distal fragments so you always look at the distal fragments and look at its displacement and according to the displacement medially or lateral from the anterior posterior view anterior posterior from lateral view you can describe it as that example is which is showing a medial and posterior displacement of the distal femoral fragment Number seven, angulations, and also angulation is very important, and it can be described as tilt or angulations. It is the same meaning. Uh, for example, this uh, radius, which is showing uh, fractures at the distal third, and this uh, uh, fractures is angulated. Angulated meaning forming an angle, and this is the dorsal aspect, and this is the volar aspect of the wrist, uh, because this is the scaphoid bone which is pointing to the volar aspect. So the angulations or the angle which is formed here, this angle is at the dorsal direction, so there are dorsal angulations. So it is, can be described as dorsal angulations due to the angle at the dorsal aspect, can be also described as a dorsal tilt by the same meaning. And the most common angulation fractures is the coolis fractures, which is have dorsal angulation compared with the Smith fractures, which have volar angulations because the angle has a volar aspect. As we see here, this is a scaphoid, so this is a volar aspect and the angle in the volar aspect here. So it is called the Smith's fracture. So the angulation is very important also for discriminating and recognizing the types of fractures as that examples which can discriminate coolies from smiths by the angulation it can be described as tilt also as the same meaning volar tilt or dorsal tilt the last items which you should be mentioned in your report and you should notice in the fractures when you're facing a fractures for a long bone 
is a, a rotational deformity and this is clinically can be filled or can be noticed however you can also discriminate it in your uh, uh, study by looking at the study if you look at this study this is the coracoid process in that diagram which referring to the anterior and the uh, that is the posterior aspect of the scapula so if you look at the lateral view you know that is the lateral view and you look at the distal joints you can see it at the anteroposterior view so you know now there are a, a rotation and this is an external rotation because it is rotated externally if you look for that another example of the uh, also uh, the shoulder joint and the shoulder joint here is examined in the anteroposterior view however if you look to the distal uh, joint of the elbow you can see it at the lateral view so you know you know now you have that you have an internal rotations or you have rotations and according to the rotations internal or external you can describe it it is noticed clinically however also if you have the two joints of the longer bones uh, proximal and distal joints you can discriminate if there are external or internal rotations i think this is the eight items or the last items you should be describe it during the uh, phased long bone fractures at the end i hope i provide you with clear knowledge about the long bones fractures and how can you describe it thank you very much for watching and have a nice day